Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy, and this is the last episode on this channel that I will make that involved the Transformers. Uh, way back in, I think it was June or July of 2014, I posted my first video on YouTube, and it was actually an unboxing of this shirt right here. It was a loot crate uh, of Marty McPrime, <laughs> time traveler. Uh, this was a loot crate shirt, exclusive shirt, and when I saw you know, that there was going to be something Transformer themed, in an upcoming box, I thought, you know what? I was watching Loot Crate unboxing videos at the time. I was a big fan of Rage Nation, and he was covering a lot of the Transformer movie news that were coming up. And I said, I gotta, I gotta check this out. I gotta get one of these boxes and, uh, and, and unbox it. And that was my first video, and it actually doesn't exist on this channel anymore, sadly, um, because the quality was really bad. There were some things I got rid of over time because of quality, and uh, and I kind of part of me wishes I kept them. I think I might even have it somewhere on like an old drive somewhere. I think I saved some of those early videos just in case for nostalgia purposes. So if I ever archive stuff on a website one day, maybe you'll see it, you know, posted up on there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a long time ago now, almost 10 years. And so uh, this channel started with me covering Transformer stuff, but I will cover some Transformer things over on the gaming channel because there's a new Transformer game coming up. And that's how I'm gonna handle stuff now outside of Venom Vlog is if there's a video game of it coming out, you know, like Transformers or Ninja Turtles or something like that, I can talk about those on those channels go through some comic book history while I'm playing the game and do stuff like that. So that's kind of my plan. Um, but Rise of the Beast had just come out and uh, actually Blue, my altar, saw it first. We had two tickets to go to uh, to see it as a, a early screening of it for like a day early at, uh, at City Walk. And we had two tickets for me and my friend Nate, but Nate had to cancel because he was like traveling for work and stuff. So I told Blue, I said, you can do whatever you want with the tickets. You know, I'll maybe wait till Nate comes back. And what ended up happening is Blue returned one of the tickets and put it for the next day for Thursday which is actually the opening day of the movie and then he saw it Wednesday early because he saw that they were giving out these posters so he wanted to make sure we got one which was really cool so he went and saw the movie and I uh, got this uh, Optimus Primal poster and this Maximals badge that you can stitch on and, and wear on your clothes so I thought that was really cool we got that the patch and the and the print and they're selling buckets of popcorn with you know glowing you know Autobot you know Optimus Prime heads and stuff but just for money reasons you know we neither of us I was really surprised he didn't buy one uh, but when I saw it I was tempted to uh, but I didn't buy it either but I went the very next day so this is still fresh in my mind this was just like two days ago I saw the movie and I'm I'm excited to talk about it because like Blue who loved it you know it was like his third movie he saw in the theater <laughs> so it's like you know of course one of his favorite movies of all time but uh, but for me, it was really up there with uh, the Transformer movies. Like, yeah, it has some of its, you know, cheesy writing at times and bad dialogue delivery and even some bad acting at times and, uh, you know, non, you know, non-believable acting at times. But overall, the funness of it was great. And I saw it in a packed theater and there was people just eating it up, you know, kids, adults kind of just really got engaged in it. And uh, and when you see it with a crowd like that and you get that energy it you know, reminds you why it's sometimes fun to see certain movies in the theater. I don't really go to the movie theaters that much. I only go when my friend Nate you know, asked me to go. But so to go by myself and sit there and watch the movie with a crowd and just kind of absorb it with other Transformer fans was kind of awesome. You know, My friend Nate's not a big Transformer fan, but I know he probably would have got a kick out of the movie and had fun, but I really dug it. I think it's up there. Like the first Transformer movie with Shia LaBeouf, I think is still my favorite one. And Bumblebee is like, you know, right there as well as a close second. But I think this ties with Bumblebee. Bumblebee was like a fun, E.T., feel-good kind of, you know, Transformer movie focusing on a single character. And I thought they did a good job. And I think that helped save that franchise because after last night, that franchise was definitely tanking. And I think Bumblebee was the kind of the reset button that franchise needed. But I, again, like all fans, when I saw the trailer for Rise of the Beast, I had a fan theory that they were going to Star Trek this. Uh, you know, Star Trek 2009, where uh, they go, someone goes back in time, like Optimus Primal goes back in time and resets the timeline and, and to prepare everyone for uh, Unicron because Unicron awakened at the end of last night. And I thought, oh, that's it. He woke up, destroyed most of the Bay Universe, you know, planet of Earth, you know, that version of Earth, destroyed most of it. And Optimus Primal had to come back in time with a couple Maximals to reset everything. That's what I thought the plot was going to be. But it is not that. <laughs> it's, uh, and, and I should have known because usually when there's a, you know, a little bit of a complicated idea, these you know, studios and movies don't go for it. Uh, but they did do something in this movie that I've always wanted to see in a Transformer movie. Uh, in fact, if you guys don't know, some of the Transformer movies like Age of Extinction, Last Night, and Bumblebee, I saw all those movies early, uh, like much early, and even gave feedback on some of the movies. 
And some of the feedback I always gave was, you got to do this. You got to put this in there. Like, you know, and, uh, you know, I know it's a, it's crossing over things, but you got to do it. And I'm so glad they finally did it. You know, I'm not saying they listened to me. They clearly, this was going to probably happen regardless because they own both these franchises. But before I get into that and say what it is, if you haven't seen the movie, we're going to get into spoilers. So my overall thoughts, if you just want a spoiler-free review, I thought, you know, the main characters were cool. They are fine. Anthony Ramos was good in the movie. And, uh, and I thought everyone kind of did okay. But the Transformers, I thought, were done a lot of justice in this one. Um, I, you know, from the Maximals to the Autobots and even to Scourge and his group, like I thought the terror cons, like I thought everyone in that respect was done really well. And I was really surprised at how much I liked Mirage, considering I'm not a big Pete Davidson fan, but I really like Mirage in this movie. So, uh, that, so that says a lot for me because I was like, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the guy, but that character was awesome. And, and I like the brother relationship with Anthony Ramos and his brother in the movie. So that's what I connected to in the film. And overall, I liked it. And I think it's up there in the top three of the live action movies for sure. But nothing beats the animated 85 movie. That, to me, that's still the best Transformer movie, hands down, the best one. But out of the live action ones, it's tied with Bumblebee for second. Uh, it, I, I might have to see it a few more times to know if it's above or below Bumblebee. But at least it's up there in good Transformer movies. And that's what we really need as Transformer fans is at least good movies. And I thought this one was good. And I'm glad that people are liking it. I'm seeing a lot of good reviews come out of it. So that's awesome. I'm really happy that that's the reaction. So let's get into some spoilers real quick. I won't go into any major details, you know, for the most part, but I will talk about that thing I've always wanted to see in Transformers. I've always said, why do you have Sector 7 in these movies? Like, why is that a thing? And why don't you just use G.I. Joe? And this movie introduces G.I. Joe. <laughs> That's the post credit scene. And I thought that was awesome. Anthony Ramos is going to be brought in as a G.I. Joe member um, because they talk about him being a former soldier and he was uh, probably dishonorably discharged. It seemed like that's what they're hinting at. And, uh, and he has a little brother that he's trying to take care of who's very sick. And so after he helps save the world, he gets a chance to go work for this secret government agency who turns out to be a G.I. Joe who will pay for his brother's medical bills and everything as long as he serves his country as a member of G.I. Joe. So that's awesome. So if we're finally going to get G.I. Joe and Transformers, and what this reminds me of is actually the Marvel series. When Marvel had the rights to both you know, Transformers and G.I. Joe, there was a comic book that was uh, called G.I. Joe, All-American Hero, and it changed the title for a couple issues to Snake Eyes. And they had a Snake Eyes-focused story, but they also had G.I. Joe and Cobra still in the background. And during this time and these issues, I think it was like issue 138 to like 142 or 143, somewhere in there, those four or five issues, they introduced the Decepticons. Um, and this was the start of a new kind of universe where those characters would go into the G2 universe. And so you always hear me talk about G2 Transformers. I had the comic books. I showed them off on the channel. And, uh, and so I had that whole collection. I love that series, G2. And they even hinted at symbiotes in that series because we talked about that on the Venom vlog. So I'll put a link to that episode down below if you haven't seen it. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I like that you know, Gen 2 stuff or, you know, Generation 2 comic book series. And this G.I. Joe comic set that up. It was the reintroduction of the Decepticons who were found and working with Cobra and uh, or found by Cobra and working with Cobra until, you know, Megatron was like, I'm not going to team up with this Cobra commander guy anymore. So uh, so I love that because it reminded me of G2. And this is essentially a G2 movie universe as well. So I'm I'm on board. I got to say, whatever Stephen Capel Jr. who directed this movie, whatever they have planned for the next one. I'm on board. I can't wait to see what they do with it. So I really did dig this movie overall. And like I said, the G.I. Joe aspect was probably the biggest takeaway from it for me. But seeing certain characters was really cool too, like Air Razor and Cheetor and uh, you know, Rhinox, uh, Optimus Primal. Like seeing the Maximals was really, really cool. That's a great cartoon. If you've never watched Beast Wars, it's really, really neat. But a lot of people who were, you know, hardcore G1 fans, some of them didn't get into, you know, the, the Beast War stuff and even G2 some of it. Um, and then they started coming back in when the you know later cartoons were coming in. Uh, they came back to the franchise. But I feel like there is a hardcore fan base for Beast Wars out there. Some of them who were also G1 fans like myself, but then some who weren't who found their way into Transformers through Beast Wars. And that's awesome. You know, anything that brings you into this franchise, you're welcome by me for sure. To all are one, right? So yeah, I mean, I thought the movie was fun. Uh, some of the dialogue was cheesy, wasn't great all the time. Uh, but some of the action was. I really liked the action scenes in this because you could tell what was going on. They shot it really, really well. The camera wasn't flipping around too, too much. And when it did, it was for a reason. And it followed the action, which was really, really you know, well done, I feel like. And it was a style that I felt like this series needed where it could be big and busy, but still focused. 
And I like that there was a balance of that in this movie. And uh, Dominique Fishback, she plays a character who is like an underappreciated intern who knows about, you know, artifacts and things like that. And she starts to learn about this one particular artifact that leads them to the Maximals and Machu Picchu. And it kind of ties into that. That's where the movie starts to fall apart for me, though, a little bit. Nothing against Dominique. I liked her character. But the movie, the plot was once again, it was another story like all the other ones. It's like Sony with the, you know, their universe. Every time they do a movie, it's like. It feels like the same script, you know, to an extent with like minor changes. And that's what this one is. That's what Transformers are. They do that where they go, oh, let's just tie Transformers into something that's, you know, man-made like Machu Picchu or some kind of history that's here on Earth, like the pyramids. And it's like they do that in every movie and it gets a little tiring. And that's why I was really hoping they wouldn't do that in this one. And they were actually going to do a time travel element where the Maximals came from the future. But no, they've been hiding out in Machu Picchu this whole time, guarding a key, you know, and a relic from the Transformer world that needs to be protected because Unicron wants it and blah, 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 blah. That's where the movie was kind of like eye rolling and, and just predictable and boring for me. But the rest of it, though, there was enough there on the rest of it that I liked. And when Mirage had this sacrifice moment where he's like transferring himself into armor pieces onto Anthony Ramos, I thought that was really cool added a little bit something made Anthony Ramos look a little bit like Spike from the 85 movie but also a little bit like Mega Man which I was like yeah I love Mega Man it's I you know I like the movie overall I thought it was awesome what they delivered to us even with my gripes and everything it still worked for me and I and it made me excited to see where they might go next with the franchise and I can't wait to see them to actually reintroduce the Decepticons but do it along with Cobra and G.I. Joe at the same time that would be awesome because the government guy at the end is like look we're in the middle of a war nobody knows about so i need you like i would like to have someone like you on our side and who's dealt with the robots and i need them on our side too they might help us win this war so clearly that's going to be them trying to recruit the autobots into a war against cobra and then cobra is going to team up with the decepticons probably so even though it's predictable i'm excited for it because at least it's gi joe and transformers in one movie and that'll be fun to watch so uh speaking of that though i do want to talk about something else I, that's why i want to get all this in one last episode because we used to review Transformer comics on the show, toys, everything like that. And like I said, if I do any more of that, it'll be on the other channel, on the gaming channel. So be sure you're subscribed to that because uh, when that game comes out, you know, I will definitely be playing that and we'll talk Transformer stuff over there. And I'll show off any figures or toys and stuff that we haven't gone over yet on this uh, on the show. Um, but uh, for this last episode, I wanted to talk about a, a beginning, a new beginning for Transformers. Because I followed the comic books from Dreamwave, from Marvel to Dreamwave to IDW. And, uh, and now there's a new person, a new group that has the rights to Transformer comic books. And it came out in the most unlikely area, somewhere I was hoping it would end up, but I didn't expect it to actually do it. One of my guesses was that after IDW lost the rights to Transformers, it would go over either to Marvel or to Image Comics. And I was really surprised that I was kind of half right with the Image one, because what it ended up doing is going to a book called Void Rivals, written by Robert Kirkman, the creator of The Walking Dead, a great, great comic book series and TV show. And, uh, and Robert Kirkman was on the writing board during the, you know, the time when they hired a bunch of writers to work on Transformers. He was actually one of the names they name dropped and saying that he was involved after last night, he was gonna help build a Transformers cinematic universe with them. And I guess he still had that itch in him to do something with Transformers. So what he does is he created this new book called Void Rivals that came out under the radar. Uh, he was promoting it for a while, but you just didn't know it was tied to Transformers. And this book sets up a new universe by Skybound through Image Comics that reintroduces the Transformers. So you follow these two robot characters and they're lost and stuck on a planet and their ships are crashed and they're trying to get off the planet. And then they find a mysterious third ship. And when they come across it, it transforms into jet fire and then Jetfire flies off. And this begins a new comic book series called the Energon Universe. Uh, so it's really cool that when I started this show, I was unboxing Transformers stuff from Loot Crate. I was doing toy reviews. I was following the Michael Bay movies. And now I get to end this show wearing this shirt, talking about the latest Transformer movie, which introduced Beast Wars into the live action universe. And then I get to say goodbye to the IDW books, which we did already on the show and say hello to a new future for Transformers and G.I. Joe, which will both be in a shared universe along with these characters. So those books will be coming out later this year from Image and Skybound. So I encourage you, if you're watching this episode, to go look those up wherever in time you watch this show. Go find the Skybound released Transformers books and, and G.I. Joe books. And I will definitely talk about them at least when we're playing the new game whenever that drops. Uh, so I'll save them until then. But I'll definitely be reading them monthly and checking them out. And maybe I'll post about them from here and there 
on Twitter and Instagram. So if you want to follow me on those, you can. The links to those are down below. So that's it. I just This is one big final Transformer episode, and I'm glad I got to talk about the movie Rise of the Beast, the Void Rivals comic book, to mention you know the history of Transformers on this channel. It's It's been a fun ride. Now, I will always love these characters, always. Um, but uh, but you know we're trying to streamline some things on this channel and try to save things for some other stuff. So the gaming channel will definitely play Transformers games, you know, from War Cybertron and, and those games. We'll replay those at some point. Um, and then we'll also play any new games that come out. And over there, we can talk about Transformers stuff. But for at least this channel, this is us signing off, rolling out one final time before we end the Seek and Destroy show. And just want to thank all of you that were subscribed to this channel that followed me because of Transformer content. I hope you still like the other stuff I put out. And, uh, and, you know, if I do shorts at something, you know, or anything like that at some point, if you guys want me to try to include Transformer stuff, I'll do my best. But I think mainly I'm going to just try to shuffle that over to the gaming channel and we'll talk about it over there. So I hope that doesn't bum you out. I just feel like this is a good point in my life where we can jump off of this uh, and everything we've talked about on Seek and Destroy show and that variety show that I used to create here. We're trying to wrap that up and get through a lot of stuff. We're going to do Friday the 13th. Inhumans, we've got a couple other episodes coming up where we're going to finally... Do all the things I promised I would do on Seek and Destroy, and we're going to get them all done before episode 300, and then we're going to say goodbye at that point. So this is my goodbye to Transformers. I appreciate you all being here on this journey with me and talking Transformers with me over the years. It's been a blast, and uh, we'll hopefully have many more years over on the gaming channel to keep talking about Transformers on our show, which is called Till All Are One. So, you know, I haven't released a lot of episodes of it, and I'm way, way behind on doing more. Uh, that's pretty typical of me with all the stuff we got going on. But it's a show that Blue likes me doing, uh, so it could be something that I can try to squeeze more time out of to create as we balance our, you know, living situation. So, uh, so yeah, we'll have hopefully more content very soon. So thank you so much, as always, for watching this channel. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you on Cybertron. Roll out. Peace.